Thank you, Heavenly Father, King of Glory. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, our God and our Savior. Our God and our Savior, we just worship you. We say, blessed be your holy name. Blessed be your holy name, Lord Jesus. Blessed be your holy name, Lord Jesus. Thank you, everlasting Father. Thank you, everlasting King. Thank you, our God and our Savior, Lord Jesus. We all know you, Lord. We all know you. We all know you, our God. We all know you, our Savior. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. Amen. 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 Ah, I need a cool teacher today. Mm -hmm. There's somebody on my mind. I don't know if she'll be. She will do me down. Mm. Betty, how are you? Good evening, sir. How are you? Did you know I was going to call you? <laughs> so the people in my house called it. <laughs> are you serious? Good evening, sir. It's good to hear from you. It's good to hear from you, too. I don't know. You're the one that crossed my mind. So I say, what else if not? So the people in your house already knew I was going to call you. Yes, sir. How did they know? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, uh, that's nice. That's very good. <laughs> so, are you okay teaching with me today? I'm, I'm, I'm okay wherever you say I should be, sir. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Ah, uh, correct, correct. Now, sir, D. All right, praise Jesus. Heavenly mm -hmm. Father, just take over this morning, this evening, in Jesus' mighty name. Mm -hmm. I ask for help, Lord. Take over this body, Lord. Take over this tongue. Take over this tongue, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. So, today's topic is sanctification. So, you know, as I was looking at this topic, I was just wondering, like, like the literal message of life meeting, almost every life meeting, you hear something about sanctification. It's just... It's like it's like that's your that's that's our vision, that's our message, mm -hmm. that's all we talk about. Just being sanctified by faith, by revelation of the word. Yes. Praise Jesus. I so uh, but I want us to be very open this evening mm -hmm. because we hear about sanctification every day. It doesn't mean that we know everything about sanctification. So um, we'll be talking about it. Again and again until we become sanctified. Amen. And we go beyond sanctification in Jesus' name. Amen. Come into the very life of God, which is His eternal life. Amen. Praise God. I mean to learn the life of Christ and learn the everlasting life and embody His full life, but um, eternal life. Amen. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Mm hmm. So this topic, we have many things to talk about today, not today, this entire maybe three weeks of teaching, God willing. What does the Bible teach about sanctification? What aspect of believers need to be saved? Hope oh, everybody can hear me well. Yes, sir. What are some things that we need to be sanctified from? <clears throat> Who is the sanctifier? Who are the sanctifiers? What is the tool of sanctification? What are the difference between sanctification and preservation? Hmm. Praise God. So, um, Betty, is your Bible beside you? Yes, sir. Do you have King James Version? Yes, sir. Aha, uh -huh. praise God. I'm not saying other versions are bad, though. other versions are. But, um, I prefer King James Version. Um, and our daddy, you know, our daddy very, very prefers King James Version too. Yes, sir. Praise God. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So can you open to John 17? Um, let's read from verse 13. I'll be interjecting as we're reading. Okay, sir. Yes, thank you so much. No problem, sir. Um, John 17 from verse 13. 
And now come I to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. 14. I have given them thy word, and thy world hath hated them, mm -hmm. because they are not of the world. Mm -hmm. I am not of the world. Let, let's stop there. Let's stop there. So Jesus Christ was praying for his disciples. Yes. And um, if you look at this, you realize that you are one of them too. Yes, sir. I am one of the disciples too. I have given them thy word. And because uh, this word has been given to us, mm -hmm. uh, the world ate us. Now, what is the, now when we are talking about the world, now we're not talking about people. Mm. Even though it, the, the hatred will show true people, but really, really, it's not the people, it's not people that hate us. Mm. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, you see, this understanding will help us walk in love a lot. Mm. Yeah. Is a the world is a spirit. Yes, sir. Or the spirit of this world. Praise God. Hallelujah. Um the world hates them, but it's, even the world is using people to hate us. It's not the people that really hate us like that. Mm -hmm. The spirit that hates us. And the, what, they, what the spirit hates is the word that has been given to us. And um, the word, even, you know, even though the some of us are not living out the word completely, but the fact that we have regard for the word is enough reason for the our spirit to hate us. Because if we have regard for the word, then definitely we will consider what the word is saying. Yes. So what that word is fighting is even our consideration for the word. Mm. Because the word contradicts everything the world talks about. Yes. So every time a man gives himself to the word, he's actually going against what the world is has taught and what the world is teaching or what, even what the world will teach. Because one thing I've realized is that the world is progressive now. It's progressive. Um, um, darkness gets darker. Mm. Mm. Dark, darkness gets darker. And um, if darkness gets darker, it's a progression of darkness. Um, I, I realized that the essence of increase in knowledge in this generation is because darkness has increased too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, darkness has really increased. So God is pouring out knowledge to this generation. Um, you, you see someone that just got born again. Before you know it, they were exposed him to the ministry of revelation. Yeah. It's not, yeah. The one the reason is because of the speed where darkness is increasing out the, the speed that darkness is increasing by. Um so that you can you can as 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 darkness is increasing. His speed too can can pick up because of the knowledge that he has been exposed to. So, where where I'm going is that the world ate us, yes, sir, because of the word. Mm. If the word was not there, the world would not eat us. That's true. Mm -hmm. And that world is a spirit. Mm. Um, is the one that he hates. That spirit hates the 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 work that the word we do in a man because. The work that the word will do in the man is that it will disengage a man from the world. Yeah. Uh, there's a stronghold the world has on man that the word, that the word, praise God, sorry about that. Oops. Yeah, so the world. There's a work the world wants to do in us that the the word wants to do in us that the world does not like. Because mm -hmm. when once the word is doing that work in us, we'll be disengaging from the world. Disengaging in this fact that the stronghold of mm -hmm. this world or the wisdom of this world, the seduction of this world, you know, this world holds us down by seduction. Please don't just start like this. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to we are going to go through the manual. Let me just flow like this. The seduction which the world has towards in, in a man is that there's a pool mm. that the world has. The pool is a wisdom. Um, a, and it can play, paint a pleasure before a man. And because 
one of the things that the world paints before a man is pleasure. This doesn't mean sexual pleasure or maybe um, obvious pleasure in that sense. There's a pleasure that a soul uh, has affinity for. Yes, sir. That the world can paint before a man, before you know it, a man start yielding to that to that pleasure that. Yeah. Yeah, there's a pleasure that a, the soul of a man has affinity for, and once the pleasure is painted before a man, you just see the man dancing to the tune of the world. Praise God. So is that that thing is a wisdom that is painting that pleasure before a man. So one of the things that God will do is that he will, he will make that man wise. Yeah. Even at the barest minimum of even a baby Christian. Do you get what I'm saying? Yes, um, just, I'll give you an example. Um, I've shared this example many times. After I got born again, I used to party a lot. And just as a baby Christian, I just got born again. Um, the one of the wisdom that came to me that made me just stop going to those parties is because I just so so I just had a realization. I, I know it's a wisdom that God gave me. It's a wisdom that God just put in my heart. I just realized the fact that no, I'm I think I just I just realized I'm higher than this. Mm. It just it just came into that realization that as a Christian, a Christian is way more than this. And because of that, I just stopped. Hmm. <clears throat> I just stopped. You know, that thing is a, is actually a wisdom. You might just think that um, that realization, look, okay, yeah, I just realized, you know, but it's more than just that. It's more than just that. It's more than just realizing it. So it there was something that something was just revealed to my heart hmm. of my state. And um the act that I was doing that was contradicting to my new state mm -hmm. as a new creature. And because I just knew that, okay, I'm a new creature, new creatures are not supposed to be found in this place. I just started pulling myself away from that place. Praise God. That's even at the barest minimum of a baby Christian. So at the end of the day, you notice that this world is a wisdom. And for God to disengage us from this world, there will be a wisdom he has to bring around us that will make us begin to see the world for what it is. Mm -hmm. And because we are seeing the world for what it is, we will see, we will begin to be wiser than the pool of the world. Amen. We'll start walking away from that pool. Yeah. So, because, now let's continue. Uh, let's go start from, let's continue from 14 again. Okay. Um, verse 14. I have given them the, thy word, and the world hath hated them. Because they are not of the world, world, even as I am not of the world. Praise God. So you see that the word, the, what makes you not of the world yeah. is because of the word that has been given. Yeah. Praise yeah. God. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. And shade us from the world because the world have their own word too. Mm -hmm. They have their own word, which is their own wisdom. Yes. Yeah. Which is their own wisdom. They have their own word. And we, we have our word. And our word, the word, our word contradicts their word. Yes. So obviously. And even, and you see, the world hates us. And God is asking us that we should hate the world. Mm. Uh -huh. That's the only thing God permits us to hate. Yeah. Mm. Praise God. He said, love not the world. Yeah. He said, if you love anyone that loves this world, the love of the Father is not in him. Mm -hmm. So in, in other words, God detests the world. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now let's continue to verse 15. Thank you. Verse 15. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, mm -hmm. but thou shouldest keep them from the evil. Thank you. So the world is evil. Yes. Do you get what I'm saying? Yes, sir. The world is evil. Evil is something you should run away from. Run away from. You should fight. Mm. You know, the Bible says you should fight evil with good. Yes, sir. Or you says if I a better word, overcome. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. With good. And the word of God is good. Mm. Praise God. Hallelujah. So 
this is not that you should take them out of the world, you know, the jurisdiction of the world, where the world is. And now somebody has read the scripture now and came up with his own doctrine that you don't, you are not, uh, don't take them out of the world. In other words, you can go to party too. It's just that you not let the party, everybody are doing the party affect you, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, where they are sinners, you can hang around them. Exactly. You will not let, that's not what this scripture is saying. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And I've seen it. And some people will now say, why shouldn't I go to all these concerts, all these um, Bonner Boy concerts? After all, the Bible says we are, we are, you should not take them out of the world. I've heard people defend some of their bad behaviors with this. Yeah. Hmm. Uh -huh. That's not what they are saying. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. That's not what they are saying. The Bible says, guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it flows the issue of life. Praise yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. You guard your heart, you guard everything, your eyes, your ears, mm. you guard every door of your mm. of your soul. You know, those senses that are the doors of your soul, your eyes, your ears. Yeah. Mm. You guard those things. Like you don't you don't just come around things that will corrupt you, even when you're on social media. Mm. The, you see some some you have even when you are following some people on social media that by the time you see what they are what they are posting, there are some people you should, you should unfollow by now. Yes, sir. Yeah, some people you should delete their account from your phone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some people's WhatsApp well, some people WhatsApp number you are supposed to delete them. Ooh. Yeah, you shouldn't be seeing some things. There are some people that some their WhatsApp post um updates of the um, story. They are on mute on my phone. Yes. You won't see it. Because I'm guarding my heart. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Guarding my heart. Yeah. Praise God. Hallelujah. You, you don't hang out around rebellious spirits mm -hmm. or lascivious spirit and say, because God say don't take them out of the world. Lasciviousness is lawlessness. If you spend mm -hmm. too much time around them, they will corrupt you. Mm. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah, so that's not what the scripture is saying. What the scripture is saying is that um there's we, we are in this world. That means the wisdom of this world is at play everywhere. Mm. And is you you can be for us to you can you can be you, as long as you are in this cosmos, this world, you still you encounter the wisdom of this world consistently but you can be kept yes sir that means you can be kept from the evil um that means a man can be shielded and what is shielding us is the word we carry when a man engage the word um because we we partake of the evil of this world by engaging the wisdom that is in the world the understanding of this world. Um, we engage it in different ways. We have engaged it and we are still engaging it. But the way we disengage from it is that we engage something else that contradicts it. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So, that he said, but thou that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. Mm. world is evil but you can be kept mm. you can be kept the way you are kept is that when they give you sight to see evil mm. knowledge to see what how evil the world is um, the wisdom to disengage from it too is there yeah. My time is exposed because the, one of the things about this world is that it does want to be ex, it does not want to be exposed. Yes. Yeah, it does not want to be exposed. Yes. So light exposes the evil of this world. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Hallelujah. He said the light shineth in darkness, and darkness. Ephesians was saying something that. Um, Everything that is hidden will be exposed by light. You know, and we are sure that um, 
is that light is not maybe the halogen lamp or bulb light is talking about no or is light is knowledge yes sir so anytime knowledge comes one of the first thing you see is what has been hidden for so mm -hmm. long light comes to expose it maybe you've been talking in a certain way and understanding just come and you just say kai yes sir praise jesus you just say kai i'll be bad it's because light came mm. Right? Yes, sir. So this the antidote to darkness is light. He said light, he said darkness cannot compare it. In other words, when light comes, the reason why you are going to overcome darkness with light is that, that um when the wisdom of that light shows up, mm -hmm. the darkness, the wisdom of darkness does, does not understand its mannerism. Mm -hmm. So because it does not understand its mannerism, it can outplay it, it, it can mm -hmm. outplay that darkness. So you just notice that the way you are disengage from darkness is that you become you 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 have a you have a mannerism that that darkness does not understand. Yes. So it's a is a mannerism that you develop by the light that comes. Yes. And before you know it, boom, you are walking out of darkness. Uh, the reason why you can walk is that it's called an it's an escape. Why is it an escape? You know, anytime somebody escapes, because you have played your captive. Your captor, um, your captivator, or your the person that was held you captive, right? Yes. You must outplay the person. If somebody is holding you bound, for you to escape from that person, you must outplay the person. So light gives you wisdom to outplay darkness. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's continue. I hope that I will be able to pass. This was there's a lot I'm saying through this scripture. Oh, thank you. Jesus. Aha. So the world is evil. Verse 16. Verse 16. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Uh -huh. Sanctify them through by truth. Mm -hmm. Thy word is truth. Thank you very much. Praise God. Oh, this this scripture actually. Um, validate all I've been saying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Validate everything I've been saying. Now, that's the tool of sanctification. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Truth. Praise God. You know, um, even though we are teaching um, milk of the word today, we will see from what that has been teaching for a while now. He has been, he has been emphasizing on how you come into truth, how that truth is like the solidification of revelation knowledge, right? Yes, sir. But when knowledge comes and he, he exposes a way to you and you walk in that way, you are established in um in the truth. Praise God. Mm -hmm. Praise Jesus. So the establishment of the truth is what is what true sanctification is. Once the truth is established, sanctification has happened. Yeah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Ah, hallelujah. Let's yeah. go on. Let's go on. Satisfy them by that truth. Thy word is what? It's truth. truth. Let's, let's move on. 18. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself that they also might be sanctified through the truth. 20. Neither pray I for this alone, but can for you Can you go back? I think I, um, my internet broke. I'm also, so sorry. Can you go back to very, 18? So, okay. 18. As thou hast sent me into the world, mm -hmm. even so have I also sent them into the world. Mm -hmm. so, praise and, God. You're wondering, like, you'll be wondering, if you say the world is if. Mm -hmm. Why are you sending them into the world? Do you get what I'm saying? Yes, Why are sir. you sending them into the world? Praise God. He says, so have I also sent them into the world. There are many reasons. Mm -hmm. Many, many reasons. Number one, um, for a man to actually change, he must be, he must, he must wrestle. 
Yeah. You get what I'm saying? First of all, you must rest with God. Another one is that um is this one we interpret it from the point of view of evangelism that he has sent them into the world. You get what I'm saying? To draw to manifest the life of God, to draw people out of the world too. So there are many reasons that he can be said he has sent them into the world. But mm-hmm. I don't want to dwell here too much right now. Uh let's go on. Let's go on. 19. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, mm-hmm. and they also might be sanctified through the truth. Through the truth. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise you. You'll be wondering what Jesus Christ was saying there. For their sakes, I sanctify myself. But Jesus Christ didn't have sin. Mm-hmm. Do you get what I'm saying? So you can see sanctification is, is more of an exaltation. Mm. Do you get what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Yeah. It is a pathway that a man must follow. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. He said, I sanctify myself. That day also, you know, that was I'm showing a pattern that will lead them to their own sanctification too. too. So is a sanctification is a pattern, a way. Let me use the word way. Is an understanding, is a wish, is a wisdom movement. Praise God. Yeah. That we that we show another that we, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. In other words, by the time they see it, they will learn the mannerism of escape. Yes, Praise yes, God. Sir. Just by watching my mannerism, they will learn that mannerism of escape. I'm actually teaching the middle of this message from the beginning, but and it's okay. Praise God. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Praise God. Yeah. Praise Jesus. Yeah. So, and for their sake, I sanctify myself that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Yes, let's move on. Let's move on. Verse 20. Neither pray I for, for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. Mm-hmm. Praise God. Continue. That they all may be one, mm. as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee. That they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. Praise Jesus. So you see, the the end of the, the essence of sanctification is that um Jesus wants us to be one. So, in other words, the hindrance of being one with him is first that we are not sanctified. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yeah, we can't be one with a with a holy father. There has no sin. Why we carry sin? Yes, sir. This is one thing that the world, people don't want to agree with, you know. So if you just want to claim that I am sanctified, I'm justified, I understand where we are coming from. But I also want to understand um, that the scripture has context. Praise God. And Scripture has, there's when the Bible is talking, many times there's a scope around what it's talking about. So the sanctification, if you say I am justified, it's not that you are really lying in that sense. It's not that you are lying, but um is not all correct. Yes. Because if you are making reference to your spirit man alone, if you are making reference to your spirit man alone, you can say, wow, I'm sanctified because the spirit man is holy. The spirit mm-hmm. man of mm-hmm. sin is holy and that's even the real you. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. But when you are talking about man in his wholeness, when you say a whole man, whole, because obviously, spirit man, if spirit man alone cannot walk on this earth, is an that would be an alien. Yes, <laughs> yes, sir. You get what I'm saying. So if you are making reference to your spirit man alone, because and you are saying that, oh yeah, I'm a man and my spirit is sanctified, so I don't have any other part of me to sanctify. That means you are saying that it's um it's only your spirit man that you are only making reference to your spirit man, which is not only your spirit man that is relevant in this physical world. Sir, you you what is 
relevant in this physical world is your spirit, your soul, and your body. Mm-hmm. Once soul is taken away and body is taken away, you become an alien on earth. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. And you even see that many times in the Bible, when angels are supposed to appear to people, they take up a body too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You can see because they're not supposed to just come as spirit like that when they want to appear to people. Praise God. Even though they can be around you, you will not see them, which is okay. But the reason why you are not seeing them is because by virtue of the state they are in, they are not entities of this earth. Mm-hmm. Do, do you get what I'm saying? So even your spirit man too, the reason why he's, he, can, he, can, he can stay on this earth and, and manifest on this earth is because he has a soul and he has a body. Yes. And if you have a soul and you have a body, it's not only your spirit man that will live out. And there's an expectation. Because if we live, we are supposed to live a holy life here on earth, there's an expectation, not just from the spirit man, but from the soul, there's an expectation. And from the body, God has an expectation. Praise Jesus. Yeah. Yeah, God has an expectation for both, for the three, the trap, trapability of man, trapatility of man. Praise God. So wh- wh- why am I saying this? I'm just laying all this foundation so that we can understand where we are coming from mm-hmm. and where we are going. Yeah. So you, you will see that God uh, can make reference to your spirit, but that's not the only thing God wants to engage with. Yes. Mm. He wants to engage spirit, soul. In fact, after you get born again, really, really what God wants to engage with now is your soul. And God willing, the body mm-hmm. as we go. Praise God. Yeah. Praise Jesus. If a man can 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 complete the the journey of salvation of the soul. Salvation can touch the body. Mm. Yes, it can. Yes. Mm-hmm. It can touch the body. The body can be quicken. Is that the spirit that dwelleth in just raise your from there dwelleth in you? You will also quicken your mortal body. Mm-hmm. It's possible. Go Romans. Romans. I think it's chapter eight. I'm not sure. It's okay. Yeah, thank you. That's just capital letter S by the spirit that dwelleth in you. Praise God. Yeah. Let's go back. Thank you so much. Who is um behind this um script um screen? This scripture is it, bro David? You are doing a good job. God bless you. Because help me appreciate him. I don't know the brother, but help me appreciate the person that is behind these um scriptures. Praise God. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. That so they may be one as thou. So if they are one, Jesus Christ is not just one with God, just in his spirit. How many of us know that? He was one in his spirit. He was one in his soul. Hmm. Yeah, even on earth. I'm talking about when he was on earth. And he was one in body. Praise God. Yeah. So you now realize the fact that the journey is, is a, certification is a journey. Mm-hmm. In fact, our entire life is the journey of um, sanctification and also beyond sanctification. Mm-hmm. Praise God. Yeah. Praise Jesus. Yeah. So, so we now understand the fact that when we are talking about this thing, the journey is far. Yes, sir. Uh-huh. That's you know when you know your journey is far, just where you prepare your mind. Mm-hmm. Usually, if you want to finish the journey, yes, so you first remove you first remove all the obstacles on the way you have calculated it. Mm-hmm. There's a way you you yeah, many things that you you found you find that can disturb the journey, you take them off the way. Do you get what I'm saying? So, anything about scientific when, when because 
this this is literally the life of a man. So in other words, your eye must be single. Because um the only time given for this journey is this lifetime. Yes. Yeah. Is this is this God 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 has designed our journey on earth that God has designed it that if a man will spend 80 years on earth, the provision for him to attain all of him has been made in that 80 years. Praise God. All. Yeah. And it's possible. God is God is powerful like that. That if a man used to him, he will attain all. Yeah. Mm. So it was telling the New Testament church, it was telling you that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Praise God. It's possible. You know, one thing about Satan is that Satan has made it look so, in fact, just overcoming sin alone has become so impossible in the body. Mm. Yes, yeah, I've had arguments with um, people I respect so much that I believe that God, these people know Bible. But that's, that limitation is still in the mind. Yeah. They said that's made sin look so eternal. It looks, I'm telling you, oh. it makes it look like if it can never end. Mm-hmm. He has painted sin in a way that is even Christians have concluded that it just needs to be managed. Yeah, uh, but actually, he said, <laughs> what he's saying that is you can rise above. You can be you can rise above this world. And now we are learning that you are even you can it's not just sin that you can overcome, even the creator of sin. Yes. <laughs> you see. Praise God. Hallelujah. That is not only sin you can overcome. The designer, the person that designs it, you can overcome it. Amen. And overcome him. And what we are saying is that you and you see, uh, and it's already prophesied in the Bible, in the book of Isaiah. He said, Men shall utterly look down on you and say, Is this man who weakens the nation? Yeah. This is what I'm saying. It's not the sin that they are looking down on, it's the person yeah. that weakens the nation, not even the weakness. Jesus. Do you get what I'm saying? It's not the weakness alone you overcome. You overcome the person that weakens the nation. Amen. Uh, I want to. I think. Are we getting excited about whatever God wants to paint before us within the next few weeks? Yes, yes sir. Uh, thank you, Jesus. So, if God says that you will not just, so you will see that if Scripture is telling us that we overcome the Creator of of sin, <laughs> definitely. Overcoming sin should not look impossible in our eyes, you know. But obviously, Satan has blinded man so much that some people can have so much revelation knowledge, but that 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 veil is still there. Yeah. They still see that Kai sin is, is impossible. I've seen men of God that blew me away as they were preaching on the altar. They just blew me away, and they still have that limitation that and no matter as much as on earth like this. You can never overcome sin. You just have to keep walking and so that you will not die spiritually. That is what Satan has. That's a veil. And that thing looks holy mm. to people. Right. But it's clear in the scripture. He said, even he has given us wisdom, not the wisdom of this world, not the wisdom of this world, but the wisdom of God that has made the wisdom of this world come to naught. In other words, there's a wisdom that is in God that when a man is exposed to it, the wisdom of this world becomes nothing. Nothing, nothing. In other words, when God, a man engages the wisdom of God, what happens is that he will see the wisdom of this world and it will be nothing to him. Yes. Yeah. He said, albeit we speak wisdom and make them that are perfect. Wisdom. Yet not the wisdom of this world, nor the wisdom of the prince of this world that has come to naught. Do you get what I'm saying? The reason for that wisdom, why it has come to naught, is because 
there's a wisdom that we have been given that is speaking around. around. What makes it not is because of the wisdom we have been given, right? Because to those that don't have that wisdom, that wisdom is not not to. It's a very reliable wisdom to them. Yes, sir. Very reliable. Praise God. Can we go back? Thank you very much. Verse 22. Yeah, let's go to 22. And the glory which thou givest me, I have given them. Mm -hmm. Be one, even as we are one. Praise Jesus. Now, this glory area, obviously, the Bible says Christ in you, the hope of glory. So, once a man is sanctified, he's a candidate for glory. How many of us understand that? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. I won't go into that. That's not our arena right now. But sanctification makes you a candidate mm -hmm. for glory. By the time you check the book of um, Second Corinthians, around chapter, um, from chapter two, ending to chapter three, the ending of chapter three, he was talking about the veil being removed. You want to say that as we build as in a glass, the glory of God wasn't being changed. Yeah, yeah, we, we open face. Yeah, as we, we open face. Before then, we were talking about the veil being removed, right? Um, that veil is sin. Do you get what I'm saying? That once that veil is opened, we are exposed to a life called glory. Mm. Praise God. Mm. Sin is a veil. Mm. And we see sin as a veil, a blindness. Now, when we are talking about blindness, we are not talking about um uh blindness as in not seeing anything. Mm. Is blindness. In the spirit realm is that another life is being projected. Yes. Another life is being projected that looks real to a man. Mm. That's blindness. The life is real, but it's a lie. Hmm. It's, a sad. it's a lie. And it's so the lie is so good. Many of us derive pleasure from it. It's so real. I, can't, I, I don't know if somebody have experienced something. Maybe, I don't know if maybe some sisters can relate with some things. Some brothers. One, bro, so one guy like that cannot lie to you. And the lie will be so sweet. And that sister will be telling you that this brother is lying. You know, you'll be telling the sister that, no, you are the one that does not care about my well-being. Yeah, we Praise God. Hallelujah. And the person is lying, you know, and the, the person, the sister behind you, beside you is telling you, this brother is lying. And you, you are just saying, how can you say he's lying? Yeah, it's a child of God. Because that lie was well packaged. Yeah, it takes understanding. It takes, the time will now come when you now realize, Kai, this person has been lying to me. Mm. And you now ask yourself, what, what was I even thinking? No, yeah. you are not, you are not thinking. Praise God. A veil was painted with somebody used mouth to paint veil in your eyes. Why? Mm. Praise Jesus. And I noticed that it's not only brother, like brother, the sister that have been lied to now. I heard that some sisters too, they are lions. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> lioness. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. God will keep all of us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's continue. Verse 23. I in them and mm -hmm. thou in me. Mm -hmm. Be perfect in one. Mm -hmm. Being perfect in one. You see? Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Being what? Perfect in, in them. So the more we enter into him, the more we are changing. We are we are coming into perfection, being made perfect in one. Mm. So the Bible is Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11. The Bible was talking about um, can we go there please quickly? Um 4 11. The Bible was talking about some given apostles, some teachers, some apostles. Um mm. Yeah, can we go to 12? 
for the perfecting of the saints. You mm -hmm. see, for the, the essence of why ministers are sent to us, we will preach the word and interpret scriptures. That scripture that will sanctify us. The reason why teachers, prophets, ministers that will, that will teach the word that will sanctify us as saints is first for the perfection of the saints. Yes. So you see that perfection is sanctification. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, some people can say you can never be perfect in this earth. I don't understand why. Just that's what Jesus Christ died for. Yeah. You know, we need to understand something. Um, if Jesus died for something, then Satan should not paint an impossibility of that thing in our eyes. Because Jesus Christ died for it because he knows it's possible. Mm. Jesus Christ will not just die. For something that can never, that will not be, that is not achievable. That's a waste. That's he just wasted that debt. Mm -hmm. It's because he knows that it's achievable. Yes. Thank you. Mm. It's just that how can I lose? How can I lose something that is very important to me for something that it can never be achieved? That would mm -hmm. be a foolish decision. Mm -hmm. And our Jesus is not foolish. Mm -hmm. He's the only wise God. Yes. Yes. He is God in the flesh. He's a mystery of godliness. God manifested in the flesh. Mm. Justified in the spirit. Seen of angels. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. <clears throat> So let's go back. Thank you, sir. I'm really interested in knowing who is behind this scripture. So please, can the person just let me know? I just want I just want to know the person. I'm really enjoying this. Hello, sir. Where, where are you? Let me know you now, please. Okay, you don't. You are shy. Okay. Praise God. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. I in them, let's continue. 23. I in them and thou in me, mm -hmm. that they be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me and has loved them as thou hast loved me. Praise God. And has loved them as thou has loved me. Praise Jesus. Praise God. Let me do something quickly. Sorry, I'm not trying to put anybody on the spot. Though. I just want if anybody can just give me a little recap of what I just said. I'm seeing somebody here. I'm seeing Sister Isosa. Just a little recap of what I've said. So I will know you are following me. Sister Isosa, how are you doing? Good evening, Pastor. I'm doing fine. Hello, How are you? I'm fine, sir. Give me a very short recap of what I've been saying just for a little while. Well, you've been And after talking... that, Brian will give me a short recap too. Okay. Well, you've been talking about how God um, intends that a man in the time that he um, stands on earth would be able to sort of capture God capture, um, you know, what God wants him to capture on earth and be filled with God so much so that he obviously like um, achieves, you know, all that God wants to show him and live above sin. And so you've been talking about how, you know, the enemy tries to paint a lie to us that we cannot um, overcome sin while on earth. And you said that, you know, you're showing us through God's word that that is a lie. And that um, not only can we overcome sin, we can also overcome the person, the person that is behind sin, which is the enemy that has reached the main mm. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, you sir. So That's a beautiful recap. Really, even though you have the baby in your hand, you still have to do that. <laughs> I really appreciate you. 
Thank you so much, Thank you, sir. Bro, Brian. Good evening, Pastor. Hello, sir. Yes, sir. Good evening. Yes, sir. Um, just like uh, Sister Isosa, you know, kind of mentioned. I think you were just just showing us that um, um, with God's word, it is it's possible to not only um overcome sin or overcome evil, but it's also possible to um overcome um even the being that I guess perpetuates um evil in this present world. And just also showing that, you know, even as we as Christians navigating through life in this world, it's possible to be kept from the evil. And I think there was a um, you were also just expatiating on the fact that, you know, there's a kind of, um, for maybe lack of better words, a kind of a certain level of light that maybe some Christians might be operating by where, you know, the once saved, forever saved doctrine where, you know, people just want to sit in the fact that maybe their spirit man is saved and um, are not, um, maybe because cause of like lack of light, don't really... Um, see that beyond just your spirit being saved, that there's actually a walk that needs to, that your soul needs to also be walked upon. And even that will eventually translate into the body as well. And so just showing us that even in in a man's lifetime here on earth, that the real work of sanctification or the real work that God wants to do in a man is to raise him to a point where in his spirit, soul, and body, he has trapped life and he has overcome sin and overcome even that wicked one just in my own words is just how i was going to frame it so thank you so much this is beautiful thank you i'm so encouraged so i can continue teaching now thank you yes, so sir. much thank, thank you, you so much god bless you um sister betty yes, I, sir. i'll be back now thank you thank i really appreciate you you are really doing a good job with me huh? thank god thank you sir yeah. yeah thank you so much i really appreciate it Let's go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. We're going to read the scripture, then we'll, we move on from there. Okay, so mm -hmm. 1 Thessalonians 5, 23. Abstain from all appearance of evil. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. But, okay, yeah, from verse 23. It's okay, it's okay. Let's read from verse 22. Let's read from 22, yeah. Okay, abstain from all appearance of evil. Thank you. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. Praise God. Abstain from what? All appearance of evil. So there's an expectation. Praise God. You know, sometimes people can just sit down and just say, God will sanctify me and just sit down like that. Oh, God. But there's a there's a um there's an expectation of abstinence. Yes, sir. The deliberate action of walking away. That is expected. Yeah. 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 You can't stay in the midst of the scene and say to not touch me because I am not, I am this world, I'm not of this world. Yeah. yeah. And I will see some people will give examples like Jesus Christ was a friend of sinner. Number one, you are not Jesus yet. <laughs> yes. Jesus Christ did not have um did not have lost in him in that way that yes sir. Uh, you know you know the thing is that we we have issues inside of that sin can easily play play on yes sir uh -huh. hmm. and so if i'm comparing my myself me that have sin in me with a sinless man and i was going to expose what a sinless man have exposed himself to you see that i'm joking mm -hmm. I'll be joking. Number one, you say, and they will say that then uh, Jesus Christ was hanging around Mary Magdalene, that was a prostitute, um, and uh, you know those kind of things. Um, Jesus Christ was very high. There are some things that will not touch him. There are some things that will not affect him. Yes, sir. Yeah, some things will not affect him. He was higher than well, some of us are not higher than some things. That's ah. just first one, just the barest minimum I'm talking about. Yeah. 
And you should always, you should know. See, as young people, we should know eh, our lost to some yeah. extent. Uh, you should know your weakness to some extent. There are some movies I cannot watch. Mm. Yeah. There are some conversations I can't engage myself in. Yes, sir. Once they start, when this conversation come around me, I run. It's not uh, that maybe I will hang around and try not to listen. I pack my bag. I'm pick this. <clears throat> yeah. By now, you should know that there's there are some music you cannot you cannot listen to. Mm. You see, we are talking about this thing now that we are, we are you say I know we are higher than that. Until you face temptation. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Have you ever been in a situation where you know you're supposed to leave a place, but it's just that you, you didn't find strength to leave? Yes, uh -huh. See, so first question you'll be asking yourself, why did I even go there in the first place? Mm -hmm. Do you hear what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Yeah. Especially um, sins of the flesh. Yes. Yeah. That's why sometimes, you know, flee from every appearances of evil is not um something that... Please, I'm touching... I'm going to touch many things in this sanctification topic. Amen. And I'm going to touch many things. You know, there are some things you just don't do mm. where you hang out. Mm. Um, as a as a young man, I made some funny mistakes that I made. Um, um, some of the sins I fell into as a young Christian, I shouldn't have fallen in them if I was I didn't I I didn't hang out in the wrong place. You know, you know, like I knew I had, I liked a sister. And I was visiting the sister alone. And I, in fact, you don't even understand. I was alone inside the house with the sister, and I know I like the sister. Even the sister you don't like, you don't just appear, hang out alone with her, let alone the one you like. Yeah. And I just exposed myself. I was not, I was, I was not wise. Yes. So the condemnation I faced around that time after committing that sin, I shouldn't have faced it. If I was wise enough that I'm supposed to abstain from all appearances, if appear, see, the Bible does not say evil appearance, it looked like it. Yes. Uh, once you are sensing that ah, this thing looks as if by the time I finish, by the time I join it for that, it's going to end up, it just looks like it has a shadow. Yes, mm. sir. Just shadow. You pack your things and leave. There are some environments that maybe you are even you are with you are with a brother that you you like, you don't even like, and even sometimes you know it's not really that you are thinking. It's just it's just that some thought just crossed your mind. You see, the fact that that thought crossed your mind means that you have potential. Yeah. It's not that, no, it's not that you are even having you are moving. The thoughts crossed your mind it means that there's potential. Come Don't now do Van Damme. No, I'm higher than that. <laughs> Praise Jesus. So abstain from all appearances of evil. Appearances. Anything that looks like it, you run away. You run from it. He now said, go for that. 23. And the very God of peace sanctify you holy. Holy. Praise God. So if... There's no, there's no way God of peace can sanctify us if we are always, if we have, we don't have it from our phone. Number one, make a decision to abstain from appearance of evil. Yes. Yeah, it's not possible now. You can't be eating sin and expect to be clean. Mm. You can't be eating dirt and expect to be clean. Wow. Okay. Merci. So there must first a, at least there should be a decision to abstain from appearances. Oh, praise Jesus. Hallelujah. The Lord is our strength this evening. I will yeah. um, 
please, I will take it slow. This topic is very important. So let me just calm down. If the Lord gives me speed, I will speed up. But let's just be very comfortable with the way it's going. Yes. Thank you, sir. And the very God of peace, let's continue, Auntie Betty. Yes, sir. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise Jesus. Amen. A lot to this scripture. Blameless. Blameless. It means a lot. Hmm. Yeah, it means a lot. Sometimes, many times I feel blameless goes beyond just being clean. Mm -hmm. But I won't go into that this time. Um, blameless. Yeah. Um, blameless goes beyond the thought of just cleansing. It even enters the realm of thoughts and intent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Praise God. Um, but let me just, I will, I, will, I will stay here for now. Let me stay with sanctification. Mm. Praise God. Hallelujah. I pray God that your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So it's not only spirit. Spirit is, is done at once. Pam. Yes. That's the way God created man. And God created man, male and female, he created them. Praise God. And God just God, God just created man. Boom, like that. Let us create man in our own image and likeness, and, and God created man. But when it got to the time of formation, God, God explained the process. Mm. Praise God. True. So you will see that if it's spirit alone, then God did not have to go through the effort of doing formation. Mm. So if it's only spirit that only the spirit that God needs on earth, God does not need to go through the process of formation. So formation is important. So when he said, do not conform to this world, but we really transform. You see, those are two formations. Mm. Yeah. They are both form and form. You mm. come to church to be formed. You come to life meeting to be formed. The day you got born again, creation happened. As yeah. a if a man being as a new creation, all things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. That's creation. You it happened, boom. You were quickened. But formation, praise God, formation is a gradual process. Mm. And you know that for me, we were. After man sinned, man was, let me use the word, was deformed. Mm. Yeah. Deformation is also a formation. See, you notice that um, in the temple, they were giving some, when Moses was giving instruction around those that were offer at the, in the temple, he said a dwarf should not go there, a cripple should not go there, the blind should not go there. Do you get what I'm saying? should not offer in the temple, right? Mm -hmm. So those are deformations. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Yeah. yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Let me go 21. The cook bat, the dwarf, that will have blemish, the covey scabs, the stone broken, what is stones broken? These are deformations. Okay. Mm. Praise God. Mm. Let's go back. Thank you very much. Thank you for that scripture that's confirming what I'm saying. Mm. That they cannot off, they should not come before the altar. It is not, it is not they, can, they should not offer. Praise God. Mm. So you see that. Um, there's a quality of man God is looking for that will give him a quality of worship, right? Do you get what I'm saying? Yes, 
Now, some people will say, now that I've not sanctified, doesn't mean I'm not worshiping. You are worshiping God. Please, don't get us wrong. It's not that you are not worshiping, but there's a there's a there's an aroma of worship God is looking for. Yes, sir. that can only come from a sanctified man. Praise God. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the, the worship has levels. Um, relationship has levels. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, thank you very much. It has levels. Thank you very much. Be not yeah. This scripture confirms it. Hmm. Thank you. Let's go back to that other scripture. Thank you so much for this scripture. God bless you. We preserve blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God. So okay. sanctification of spirit first. Now soul and body. Is a that's the journey. The day you got born again, the journey started. That's why every human being needs to be have a pastor that God has blessed to raise people. See, this area of being pastored, I want to emphasize on it a lot. A soul that just got born again does not know left from right, is a baby. Yeah. Praise God. Hallelujah. A soul that just got born again is a baby. He does not know his left and right. He does not even know how to walk yet. He does not even know how to feed. So a soul needs to be pastored. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Um, so, buddy, I'll be preserved blameless. Praise Jesus. Now, let's go. How many of us have our, our manual with us? Praise Jesus. Yeah. And let's look at the manual now. The issue of sanctification. There are different teachings and emphasis on the subject of sanctification with regards to a believer in different parts of the body of Christ. While some teach as something that a believer needs to experience for him to be fully saved. Now let's begin to break it down. Praise God. Now, because you are not sanctified, does not mean that you are not born again. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Let, let's, we need to emphasize it. And it doesn't mean you are not saved. Dig it. Someone that got born again on his deathbed is not sanctified. Mm -hmm. If just a form of sanctification happened, that's sanctification of the spirit. And probably by God's grace, something happened in the soul. Dig what I'm saying? So, like I told you that when I got born again, a few things stopped. That was a form of sanctification. Some things stopped. At least I, I knew those things that stopped. I knew those things I was convicted of immediately after I got born again. Some things just had to stop. Um, I started feeling bad about sexual sin. It's like cross word just dried up in my mouth. The parting spirit left me. You see, those things left and it's obvious that those things were in my soul. So there were some things that left me that day. But it doesn't mean, but there were many things that did not leave. In fact, if it's that many things left, I should be okay by now. But I can bet you that I'm not very, I'm not, I'm not, God is helping all of us, right? Yes. Sometimes I wake up in the morning, I see some of my friends and I say, ah, let me, I'm not okay. Right. You, need to, you need to press in into the spirit more. And you must be sincere with yourself. Do you know that? Mm -hmm. And you must be very sincere with yourself. Many of us, um, one of the problems that Satan, I was listening to Reverend Busui just, is it this morning? He said something. He said, those, one of those people that find it difficult to overcome pride are the ones that have not admitted that they are, they are proud. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> okay, okay. Now made reference to himself that even him, he knows he has pride somewhere. That's Reverend Buzio. I was wondering, like, hey, if Reverend Buzio say he has pride somewhere, God have mercy on you. 
So the thing is that um, we have to be sincere with ourselves and let and and be sincere that I have issues. Yes. Nobody has issues. Yeah. If you don't have any issue, you are not supposed to be in church. You're just yeah. not be doing evangelism. Amen. But the reason why we are in church is that it was um that you might cleanse his church. You can see by through the washing of the water by the word. Ephesians chapter 5, 25, 26. Praise God. Can I see that scripture quickly, sir? Thank you. Yeah, no, right. Yeah, that it might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. Praise God. So the church is a church who is called the called out. You know what I mean? Our church is ecclesia, the called out. So you are called out to be sanctified, to be mm -hmm. cleansed. Praise mm -hmm. God. Let's go back. Thank you very much. Mm. No, no, no. We are going to First Thessalonians 5. Thank you. Thank you. That's where we are. Yeah. That so you should understand that because you are doesn't mean you're not made careful, please. Anyone that gets born again today that believes in Jesus, that's why if you check the scripture, you don't say that um they went to the Bible never said we'll go to hell because uh we even because we are committing sin. That's why when you are doing sinner's prayer, it's not um prayer of Father, forgive me my sin. Mm -hmm. No, it's accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior. That is the that is the sinner's prayer. Yes. Because the sinner has a Lord and he has to, for him to change, he has to change his Lord. Mm. Praise Jesus. Yeah. yeah. What made him a sinner is the Lord over him. Yeah. That's true. Mm. Yes. So, you're saying getting born again is Jesus Christ being your Lord and Savior. Mm. I confess you as my Lord and Savior today. I believe that you died on the cross for my sins. Today I called you, I call you my Lord and my Savior, and I accept you as my Lord. See, once you proclaim it as your Lord and Savior and you mean it in your heart, boom, you are saved. Praise God. Actually, the scripture that will say this thing properly is in um book of Acts, where the apostles were leading people to to Christ. Yeah. But it's okay, don't go there, it's okay. Um where he was talking about accepting as your Lord and Savior. That was where the apostles did it. And sometimes when I'm when I go for evangelism, sometimes I still make that mistake. Sometimes I have to correct myself immediately because it's something we learned. Forgiving my sin. It's one that just got born again, does not even know what sin is. Mm. Yes, wow. sir. Yeah. Mm. So you can't, someone cannot even, someone that just that is not born again cannot even repent. What is it going to be repenting of? I mean, someone that is not born again cannot repent. It's someone that is born again that can say, ah, God, this thing I'm doing is bad. I'm sorry. Hmm. Let's see. Yeah. So, so you will see that repentance has a lot to do with sanctification. So, and there's no way a man can repent without acknowledging. That's why I said we must be sincere. You get born again, doesn't mean you will not make heaven. You will make heaven. But when we are talking about sanctification, the man must acknowledge that he has a sin. See, let me tell you something. If you don't acknowledge you have a problem, you won't change. Yeah, yeah you won't. Yeah. yeah. Even sometimes, when you are listening to a message, sometimes it's difficult to accept that that thing that pastor is saying is you they are talking to. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes it can be difficult. Sometimes you rather see your sister that committed that sin yesterday. Uh, 
than yourself that you don't know. You know, there was a time that I was listening to a pastor one time and he said, there was a time that God just started teaching him about covetousness. God was just teaching him about covetousness. And him, he was wondering, like, why am I, why is God teaching me covetousness? Me, I don't have covetousness. Do you get what I'm saying? He was just saying, but it's okay. Because he's a pastor, he was thinking that maybe God wants him to teach about covetousness. So he, he, he continued spending time with God. He opened the Bible. Every single scripture was teaching covetousness to him. And he was just wondering, ah, why? Why is it that every time I open my Bible, it's covetousness that is coming to my mind? Mm-hmm. Only for him to have financial issue. Just a few months after the Lord has been teaching him. Mm-hmm. Then the same pastor, that when they give him envelope, he will not even open the envelope. He will not open the envelope, he will get him, he will just pass over the envelope to his wife. That can just, just check what is inside, please. You know, before he wasn't, now he said because he now had financial issue, he will go and preach, and his eye will be following the envelope. Right. He never knew that he had that capacity, but God saw, knew he had it. So God has been teaching him about it even before that financial issue showed up. That will expose it. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. So you see that we don't even know issue we are. That God wants to sanctify us from. Praise God. So why am I saying all this? If you are, because you got born again, because you are not sanctified, doesn't mean you will not make heaven. You will make heaven. But God did not just call us to come and make heaven. Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, make it. Going to heaven is just a change of environment. That's where I see it. Mm. This environment to a better environment. Mm. But it doesn't mean your going to heaven doesn't mean that your state, the state of your soul changed. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Because you, you know that um even rapture is just your body that will change just to fit the world they are taking you to. Do you get what I'm saying? The, when the rapture happens, they will just change your body to fit the world they are taking you to. Mm. It doesn't mean that um, you were part of your sin. Yes, sir. Yeah. That's when we we'll get to heaven. Jesus Christ, the Bible started talking about the stars brighter, shining brighter than uh, divine from other stars. So is the resurrection of the dead. Do you get what I'm saying? So we will all be different oh. in heaven. And that difference will be we show in our state. We will not be ashamed when we reach heaven in Jesus' name. Amen. We get to that point where I will get to heaven and see what I could have attained and I don't attain it. God help me. Okay. That God should help me. So we are doing introduction today. I've concluded that today is going to be introduction because I only have 30 minutes to go and I've only I've never finished the first page. Praise God. Hallelujah. So now, because you are born again, because you are when you if you are born again, you you go to heaven, doesn't mean you are fully sanctified. Praise God. Hallelujah. But some people some people believe that you are not saved because once you are not sanctified, you are not saved and you cannot make heaven. No, that's not true. Now, please, we are going to be correcting many things that. And maybe some knowledge that in the body that are not correct. And it's not that we are saying we know better. It's not that we are saying so that um just 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 let us adjust and our, our hearts in a way that when some things are being corrected, we is not we are not being critical. Do you get? Uh-huh. We are not being critical, we are just putting things in their place so that we can grow it. Praise Jesus. Mm-hmm. Um Something that is that a believer needs to experience for him to be fully saved, without which he is not saved. You see, others teach it as a continue continuation in the experience of salvation that assuredly began at the new birth. Now, some teach it that way. Furthermore, there are saints and 
ministries who teach it from the point of view of holiness of the body. Praise God. So you um, as do's and don'ts of the body of a saint. So there are different teachings around sanctification. There are some people that, you see, I've already mentioned those people that believe that the day they got born again, they're already sanctified. In fact, some of them are so bad, they will commit sin, they will say it's not their, it's not them that committed the sin, it's their body. And yeah. they are different from their body. That's one is a big lie. I mean, that one, those ones are liars. They want to continue their sin, they love their sin, and they want to continue in it. That's why they are saying that. That's evil. That's evil. Yes, it's evil. It's evil. And when I was on campus, though that doctrine was very common. You will see someone that was heading the campus fellowship sleep, sleeping with a, a sister in fellowship and saying that it's not him that is doing it, it's his body that is doing it. Oh, yeah. And because of that, he will not he will not feel any condemnation. He will can finish doing it now, enter the fellowship and raise up holy hands, and he thinks he will connect to God. You see, you see, this is this is this is this is the lie of Satan. That we, that we, that we, we suck life out of the soul of a man. Comfortable with his sin. So, mm. Satan put him in a state where he can continuously leak life without even gaining life. He, a man will just, he will just be drying up and drying up and drying up. He's a Christian who will be in church, he will be serving in church, and he will be drying up consistently because he has put himself in a state where God cannot reach him. Mm. Because anybody God cannot correct is dying. Oh, yeah. If you are in a state where you can't be corrected by God, you are thinning out. That person is thinning out continuously and he doesn't know. So if you find your place in yourself in a place where you find it so difficult to repent, maybe you should really reach out to your pastor yeah. or your, your brethren around you that, hey, I'm finding it difficult to repent of this thing. Mm. Because there are some situations like that, that you just, there's just some, some things that Satan has so validated in your heart that repenting from it can be so difficult. Quickly call for help. Praise God. So some people, I've already explained that one. Now there are some people, ah, thank you, Jesus. I surely began then there are some people that believe that it's do's and don'ts. Now, am I saying that journey of sanctification, there's not something to do, there's something to do. But it's not do's and don'ts as in religion, it's not do's and don'ts as in the law, it's not do's and don'ts as in self-strength, it's not yeah. do's and don'ts as in you defining righteousness for yourself and giving yourself standard that the scripture did not paint to you. Mm. Yes. Praise God. Hallelujah. So, a man somebody can fall into a trap that because he, um, because he or she does not do certain things that satisfy them as holy. I said I was talking to a sister one time, you know, just talking generally. I was a person's youth leader, but I was talking to a person about sin. And everything, and the person stopped me. That she she knows that she's a good person. And what is the backup of she being a good person? She said she has never gone to a club in her life. So and she has never she has never slept around with men. So to her, that's I should not enter that area. That she she has this, no no to her, she is doing fine spiritually, because those two things, she knows she's free from them. Oh, yes. And she was now using that thing to compare herself with some other people that oh. call themselves spiritual. Oh. Now, this is this is real life experience I had. Do. I was the president youth leader. So you see, because you don't do some things, but check it, the Bible says, the Bible does not say those that do some things I've come short of the glory of God. He said, all I've sinned. Mm -hmm. So even me that I'm preaching to you, I'm not exempted. All. Mm. All I've sinned and come short of the glory of God. All. Mm. 
So it's not do's and don'ts here. But definitely, for you to be sanctified, there will be something that God expects you to do. Mm. Praise God. There's something God expects you to do. Ah, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. So we should understand that things about sanctification, and there are some set of people, that one is not here, now, there are some set of people that believe that they are sanctified as long as they are serving in church. Sorry. And they are serving well in church. They believe they are doing fine with God. I, I'll share another experience with you that I had. Um, there was a sister like that that um was believing God for a child. So in the prayer room, and we're doing morning prayer we in church, we're just doing a prayer session, and the prophecy came forth for that sister that's looking for a child that um that she should begin to ask God for mercy. That begin to ask God for mercy. That was the prophecy that came forth that day. And the sisters burst into tears and said, Why would you tell me to be asking for mercy? I've, I've kept myself all my life. I've served God in church. I've been in the choir for many years. I don't even miss workers' meetings. You know, she was just stating her righteousness. This is real life. Oh, I'm telling you, experience. Oh. Experience. This is experience. Real life experience. She was actually, she didn't have a child. And so at that moment, somebody had to teach her. Because that day was a breakthrough. This has a, a, a child now, a, a, a baby, a girl, that the girl is around the age of seven now or or eight. I'm not sure. I know this person I'm talking about. I'm just so you know that this one is the reality I faced. They had to teach her at that moment that asking for mercy goes beyond what you do or what you don't do. Mm. So there's a way so what we do can be righteousness before our eyes and think that we are doing fine with God. Or what we don't do can put us, make us feel like we have a validation before God. Yeah. Mm. Praise Jesus. But now, what God is saying is that all have sinned and come, all have sinned. And so everybody should just agree that the journey of sanctification is for everybody. Yeah. Even if in your family you got born again to a Christian family that everybody is holy, you got started speaking in tongues at a very young age, you you kept yourself in your family, you were not exposed to just just accept that either you had that experience or not, all have sinned. All have sinned. All. So that you know that the the prescription of sanctification, you are not exempted from it. Mm. everybody must be exposed to the pathway of sanctification everybody must be exposed to it do, do you want to be free from sin everybody must be exposed to that pathway of sanctification everybody must be exposed to it If you are not exposed to it, you are not clean. That's why he said, I for their sake, I sanctify myself that they also might be what? Sanctified. That was Jesus Christ talking. John 17. Yeah. No, this is not the one. Is I sanctify myself. I think it's 20, 20 or 20. No. Yes, that's it. Sick, I sanctify myself that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Thank you very much. That's it. Uh, praise God. Is yeah. everybody being blessed? This, this teaching is so slow. And I hope you have been blessed. Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, it's very slow. I'm taking my time. But uh, I, I, there's a reason why it's like, normally I don't even teach like that. I teach very fast. But today, just the way the Lord wants me to go, I will go like this. 
Praise God. Hallelujah. What does the Bible really teach about sanctification? Now, it is good to quickly add that we are not saying that we are most accurate. Neither are we saying we know it all. Also, we are not saying those who hold the teaching mentioned above are wrong. Praise God. Yeah. Rather, what we are say, attempting to do is, by the help of the Spirit, is to see better what the Bible really teaches about sanctification in the New Testament. Praise God. Now, there are some things here I've, I've mentioned that I'll just repeat a little. Um, then we'll continue next week. Ah, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Rightly dividing man further sheds light on the biblical teaching of sanctification. Man is a spirit created by God in Genesis. Can we open to Genesis chapter 1, 26 to 27 quickly? Sister Betty. Yes, sir. Yeah. Continue. Genesis 1 verse 26. Mm. And God said, let us make man in our image after mm. our likeness. Mm -hmm. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea mm. and over the fowl of the air yes. and over the cattle and over all the earth, over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So mm. God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Okay. Yeah. 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 May female created he them. Thank you very much. So you see, he created, right? Yes, sir. He has a soul and lives in a body physically. The information came in chapter 2. Let's go to Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. Genesis 2, 7. Yeah. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his and breathed into his nostril at the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Thank you very much. Before I go ahead, there's a book that I want to recommend for everybody by Kenneth E. Again, Growing Up Spiritually. Mm. I don't know if you've read that book before. Yes, sir. Please, if you have not read it, go and read it again. I'm going to read it, or you can even read it again. He, he divided many things. In fact, he divided babyhood, childhood, uh, babyhood, childhood, manhood, fatherhood, all those things. He divided it in that book. So please, go to the book. If you have not, and if you have, and you can't even remember what is inside, you can go back to it again. Praise God. So, uh, let me just, I just wanted to quickly um, say that. So, we're put into a physical body through the breath of which God breathed into Adam's nostril. So, you see formation. Creation happened in chapter one. That was instant. But mm -hmm. formation, we started explaining a process that God did. He formed man out of the dust. He must have taken his time. You were beautiful and wonderfully made. God took his time to make you. That's why a brother or a sister should not be uh should not be uh feel inferior inferior by their look everybody's beautiful everybody's good looking everybody was made beautifully god took his time there's nobody that god took less time to make than another person mm -hmm. god god wrote the pattern of a man's life out created him in, and put and uh, and installed things in him that we write that would play out that pattern every single human being created was created in a detailed way. Every part of your body has details. If they go into God's manual, God has detail of your creation. Every single man being on earth. Yes. If you check your body, there's no single mistake there. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. I don't know if I'm ministering to somebody. So if you have a inferiority complex, God will help you to have an understanding of the way God formed you. Amen. You have to face this, face the mirror and tell yourself, I'm beautifully and wonderfully made. There's no mistake in my body. Yes. Thank you. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Sometimes you even maybe you have one, maybe you have one sickness that you're always 
falling into. Don't come, don't agree with it and say, you know, maybe it's just me. Maybe that's the way my body is. No, no, you don't accept it. God did not make a mistake in your body. Mm. Yeah. Satan perhaps have affected that have afflicted that body. It doesn't mean that's the way God designed that body. Sometimes you face the mirror. Even even that sickness is there. You face the mirror and say, I was not made like this. So this sickness has no rights in my body. Because this is not my normal design. And you ask, and you and you lay claim on healing because of that. Because there's no single mistake in your body. Praise God. There's some people that will say it's genetic sickness. No, don't accept it. There's nothing like genetic sickness. Is is a is a is a corrupted is a, a corruption of um, lineage that costs inherited sickness. Is not God. When you are coming from heaven, God did not do it that way. Mm. Yeah, no, no, no. He did not do it that way. So you can lay claim on the fact that when God, man being created, he, God did not make any mistakes. It's not that, okay, he now made one genetic. God did not design you in the way that, you know, in this one's body, let there be diabetes in it. No. Let it be that his pancreas will not be able to function to the age of nine. No. God did not design it that way. It's family lining, corruption of the family lining that caused that. I'm ministering to somebody here. Praise God. So you can lay claim on your healing from there. That when God created me, God did not create me like this. Yes. Uh -huh. So that you can be healed. But thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for that word. That word is definitely for somebody. Praise God. Um, then... You see, so there's process for creation. God took a man through a process of creation. Uh, of, no, no, through a process of formation. He carried the mud, he molded the man, formed the man, and he just formed the man. He now put his, his own bread. That we call the bread of life. And the man became a living soul. So you see the difference. Uh, gift of God to man. He said, his spirit and his spirit and soul, gift of God to man, were put into the physical body through the breath which God breathed into Adam's nostrils. When Adam and his wife sinned, they their spirit died. Now, when we are saying spirit died, it's not that someone that is not born again does not have spirit. Is that the spirit of that man came under another lordship. Ooh. That's right. Jesus Christ was telling the Pharisees, you have your father, the, dev the, the devil. Ooh. Anyone that is not born again, Satan is his father. Yes. Satan is his lord. That's why you can't marry someone that is not born again. That the Jew said, if you marry someone that is not born again, you just made Satan your father-in-law. Yeah. That means he has access into your house. Yes. If your father-in-law comes, will you chase him out? No. Yeah, you won't chase your father-in-law out now. So don't just don't even think it. Of marrying someone that is not born again, you say no, I can change him. Ah, shall you go? <laughs> One pastor was talking one time. He said he asked his sister in his church that brought him that was talking to him about a man. She said uh, he asked the brother, the sister, is he born again? The sister says he's a nice guy. <laughs> she, 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 nice guy. The brother, the pastor now replied, niceness is not a fruit of the spirit. Yes. So they proved that. You know, he's born again. That if he's born again, don't just say it's nice. He does see the fruit he's bearing, right? Yeah. So you can't just say you want to marry someone that is not born again. Yeah. Praise Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. So you see, someone that is um. Ah, oh, thank you, Jesus. So, the spirit of man died, but by the time you see it, when Adam and his wife sins. Their soul still had some life. You know that they, still, they could still hear God. The protocol department, the, the, the protocol department now. 
service quality. Please. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah, I just I just experienced an interference just now. Sorry. Um. That is busy. That is busy. Huh? What light? Sorry, I'm busy now. I'll come back. Praise God. Sorry about that. Um, so um, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Um, oh, praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Sorry about that, Tom. My voice. So it was you can realize that they were still hearing God. And they were hearing God clearly. Praise God. So you realize the fact that. Yes, and the Lord called God, Lord God, called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? Can we go to the next one? And he said, You see, there was not, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. So they heard God. They could still discern God. Do you get? But their spirit was dead. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. But you see how far man has gone now. By chapter 6, do you get what I'm saying? By Genesis chapter 6, God was already saying that man has become flesh. Mm -hmm. The next verse, verse, chapter 6, verse, yeah. The Lord said, I will destroy man. I will, uh, where was talking about? My soul will no longer grieve with man, for he has become flesh. Uh, is it verse 5? Yes, verse 3. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh. Yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. Now, God did not want flesh to just be roaming around like that. So he cut down flesh, so that flesh will not expand beyond measure. Praise God. So you will see that by, by the time we are talking in Isaiah, man, they were already calling man grass. Praise God. So you see, the generations that are happening in the soul. But the generation did not happen at once. So in other words, for the soul to grow back into the state, just the state that it was in the beginning, there must be a process of raising the soul back. Because if the soul, it took time for the soul to fall, to become flesh, to become grass, then to raise soul back into living soul, it will take time. Even It's not even only their soul that had life. Adam still lived almost a thousand years. So it means that that body, that body had, had capacity, had strength. Can everybody hear me? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. That body still had strength. It could last on earth. But you see that over time, men started dropping in age. Until by chapter six, but God had already cut it down to 120 years. By the time we got to, I think in Psalm, I think Sam was talking about in, in Sam, I'm not sure that part of the Bible where, where the Bible now said that man's life has been cut down to like 70 years. Let me see where that scripture is. Wow. Hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know where that scripture is. Yes, Psalm 90 verse 10. I think it's Psalm 90 verse 10. Can you quickly go there for me quickly? Psalm 19. Of our year are uh, three score year and ten. And if by any reason of strength they be four years, yet is their strength, labor, and sorrow. For as soon is soon cut off and we fly away. So by this Psalm 20, they were saying that the man year is 70 years, and by any chance he will enter it. Do you get what I'm saying? So man has fallen. Man has actually fallen. So the soul of man could still hear God. Man could still hear God clearly. The, the, the God, man could still discern God in a certain way that God can call and he can still ask, answer swiftly like that. Praise Jesus. Their soul, their soul still had some life while their body still housed the dead spirit and souls. The soul of man subsequently lost so much life until the body also began to die and eventually separated from the spirit and eventually separated from the spirit and soul. You see, 
So you see that as man progressed, it got to a time man's body and soul had to be man's spirit had to be separated from his spirit soul and body so the spirit of man had to be separated from the soul and the body but the one before that time happened in adam he was almost a thousand years so you can see he has still had sustainability because of the life that was carrying so you can see the power of a living soul that even after the spirit died that soul still had capacity praise jesus Hallelujah. but you see that at this point in life man has so fallen that we have gone far from it from that age till now, see the limit of man. In fact, they are beginning to drop the lifespan lifespan of man now. Now they are saying that um, um average lifespan is what? I think 65 now, I'm not sure. Praise God. Praise yes. Jesus. Praise yes. Jesus. But that's not the plan of God for man. Yes. That's not the plan of God for man. That's not what God had in plan for man from the beginning. So for a man now, Somebody can ask me that. Is it that when I not get sanctified, I'll not spend a thousand years on it? I'm not saying that. <laughs> Praise God. That's not what I'm saying. Praise God. Is that God wants to raise man's quality of life back to the vision he had for man. And for man to get to that point, sanctification must happen. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. Sanctification must happen. And sanctification is a process that God gives that it that happens by God bringing understanding. Because what made man fall is that there was a switch in understanding. What was making man fall is that understanding was switching. And as understanding was switching, man was giving himself to sin. In Romans chapter 6, we will go there. We in this course of the teaching. You went in Romans chapter 6. He said, Ye yielded yourself unto unrighteousness. And the end of it. Is death. Do you get what I'm saying? I don't know if that scripture can just show up quickly. Uh, maybe I should just open it in my Bible quickly. Romans chapter 6. Mm. Yes. And you know that whom you yield yourself servant to obey is servant ye uh, whom you obey, whether to sin or now. This can be spirit, this is, is spiritual death, but also it can lead it leads to physical death. You get what I'm saying? Praise God. So you understand the fact that um because man yielded himself to unrighteousness, something happened to man, man degenerated. So now give me an answer for man to appreciate what will happen. You have to yield yourself to what? Righteousness. So sanctification is beyond just is beyond just reading your Bible. It's beyond just the renewal of mind that we say. It's not beyond, it's beyond just changing your mindset. It's beyond, it is actually a time has to come when for a man to be sanctified, he has to be yielding himself to something that contradicts what he has yielded himself to before. That's sanctification. Praise God. I'm going to continue this teaching next week um, by the grace of God. We have a long way to go, actually. Um, don't worry, we won't rush it. I'm beginning to thank God this evening. I'm just beginning to thank God. I'm beginning to thank God this evening. Begin to worship Him. Adore Him. Thank you, Lord, for sanctification. Thank you, Lord, for this journey that we are going on. Help us, Lord Jesus. Help us, King of Glory. Help us, Lord of Lord. Thank Amen. you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen.